A common reoccurring thing you'll hear from old people is the constant comparisons of what we have now to what they had in their day. The new generation is somehow worse, the cars aren't built as well, the food isn't made as well, and the movies just suck now. But to a modern generation, it's always quite the opposite. You look at the shit that existed before you were born, and it's always just shocking people even enjoyed being alive back then. This phenomenon is quite the debate within the gaming community. Are games just not made with the same heart they used to, or maybe I'm just too old to enjoy them now? I personally think there's a lot of merit to both of these statements, and to be honest, I'm sure if you clicked on this video, you do too. I think it's time we all take an objective look at gaming without the lens of nostalgia to figure out why gaming just doesn't feel the same anymore. Now, I think to start dissecting this question, it's more important to define the overarching history of gaming in general. Now, I've made this pretty little timeline for all of us to look at here, and I'd separate gaming into two distinct eras, the pre-online era and then the modern online era. Sorry to be over-explanative, but this marks the point where online multiplayer rose to prominence and really became the main genre of gaming, and while there technically was some online capabilities with the PS2, it really rose to prominence with the seventh generation of consoles or the PS3 and Xbox 360. Now, within each of these eras, I'd label out some notable points on the timeline. The third generation consoles really marked the mainline home console era, then the PS1 and N64 took it to the next level, then of course the launch of the PS2 and GameCube, and then into the modern era. 2005 marked the release of the PS3 and 360, then around 2012 we got the PS4 and Xbox One, and then as of the time this video is being made, the most recent consoles are the PS5 and Series X. The reason I feel it important to really label this out is mainly just to give you some visual representation, but also really the shift in gaming as a whole. Now it's not all of them, but I've put most of the best-selling games of each year on here, and I'm sure you can see the gradual changes just from a glance. There is a huge distinction of when Call of Duty rose to prominence and dominates the best-selling list every year. But another reason I'm giving you this timeline is because I feel it's important to sort of mark where we all land on it specifically, and something I feel very lucky about is that within this timeline I am in an incredibly unique position. I was born quite literally smack dab right in the middle of this timeline, and naturally by the time that I was, say, coherent enough to play a video game it would make sense that chronologically I would be playing a PS4 or Xbox One, but thankfully for me, I grew up poor as fuck. All I had to play until I was maybe 12 or 13 were just retro games all the way up from the NES to the PS2 and everything in between. And as a result, I've gotten to play almost every single home console ever. Now I'm going to take a pretty good guess that most of you watching this started at one of three different points. Number one, your childhood had a PS2 or N64 making you probably around 30 or so. There are those of you who grew up with a PS2 which would make you probably anywhere from 24 to 30. Then there's my generation who had a PS3 and 360 which makes you anywhere from 60 to 25, but even though all of these console errors are so different, the common thread is that gaming for most people just doesn't feel the same anymore, so I decided to ask my friends why. The question I specifically decided to ask was, does gaming feel the same to you, and if not, when did it change and why? And before I dive into their answers and our conversations as a whole, I think it's more importantly to ask you that. After this video goes out, I want you guys to comment down below how old you are, what console you grew up with, and when you think gaming changed the most. Now, to get this started with my first friend who comes from an older generation who I thought would offer some pretty unique insight. Yeah, so why do you think gaming has changed and when do you think it happened? I'm over here stroking mm. my dick. I got lotion on my dick right True. now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, yeah. man. I'm a freak, man. Life a freak. Now, I really didn't get anything out of that conversation, and I contacted the authorities, so do with that what you will. Now, after that, I decided to go to people who were just a touch older than me, and I contacted my friend Chase. He's an incredibly good friend of mine who grew up with the PS2 era of games and is one of the nastiest Gears of War players I have ever seen in my entire life. I think gaming's always been changing, like, from the beginning. Um, and I, I'm old enough now that I got to see some of like the more notable ones. Like it seems like now, like a lot of the changes that happen are more incremental. It, it was probably slowly over time that that change happened, uh, where I felt less and less like, like I loved playing video games, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it had to do with, uh, it was like an escape from like growing up. I'm like, man, I hate school, right? Like I want to go home and like get to play games with my friends and at that time in my life, like that was definitely like a nice, you know, growing up, it was just a nice, like a, a break from everything else. Now, Chase made a lot of really good points that I never really stopped to consider, but it's fair to say his decision is relatively split. Now, let's talk about my generation that grew up with the PS3 and 360s in their homes, and let me answer this question firsthand. Gaming, for me, stopped feeling the same in the last two or three years. Once I started having a lot of responsibility and came to terms with the fact that I really wasn't capable of being a pro at any game I played, it just really lost the appeal. Gaming for the the sake of getting better really has just sort of lost a good percentage of its value and now to me it's just kind of a hobby. But games that feel nostalgic to me really seem to cap off a little into the PS3 generation. But that's just my research. Let's look into a bit more credible source. 
Reddit. Now, usually I do hate going into the purgatory that really is Reddit, but I did find one thread on here that I think provides a lot of very valuable input. Now, our poster here used to play a lot of video games, but has really struggled recently to find them as appealing. I used to play a ton of video games before, and they slapped. I used to play them all day and have so much fun, but now for a few months, I've noticed that gaming just isn't as fun anymore. Maybe it's because I have a low-end PC and don't have many options, but I still feel like it would be even if I had a higher-end one. Does anyone know why this is happening? More importantly, though, the responses are a really good place to start unraveling this mystery. Sure, you haven't lost sight of why you play video games? I feel like in the age of live service yada yada that gaming has become, it's far too easy to lose sight of why. You didn't play Skyrim because you wanted to get it 100% or to be max level, you played it for fun. You're old as fuck and your cell phone programmed you for instant gratification. Your interests are changing. Try a new hobby. All of these responses are worded in different ways, but they actually boil down to a core reason that I want to dive into. Reason 1. You're playing games for a different reason. Reason 2. The world around you has changed. Reason 3. The games themselves have changed. Reason 4 you've changed. Reason 5, mental illness. Let's dive into each of these individually and hopefully somewhere along the way find a logical answer. Reason 1, you're gaming for the wrong reasons. If you feel that games aren't the same for you anymore, I want to ask you why you played games as a kid. Did you even think about why you were doing it back then, or was it just something you did to have fun? Nowadays, when you play games or start up old ones, be honest with me, is it for the same reason, or is it for a far more driven, specific goal or endgame? I can tell you as a kid, I had absolutely no desire to max out an account or grind anything, I just wanted to dick around and have fun. For me, it was both an escape from reality, but more importantly, a way to just pass time. Nowadays, when you play games, is it to have fun, or is it to get better and more importantly, be others, which sure can be fun but also equally frustrating. When playing a game where victory is the sole objective, you can sometimes lose sight of why you're playing to begin with. The games just aren't relaxing at that point anymore, everything's stressful, and as an adult, additional layers of stress that just seem unnecessary are inevitably going to dissuade you from picking up that controller. This is where a bunch of recent statistics might be a bit eye-opening for you. Currently in the US, over 60% of the population are considered gamers. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that mobile gamers do make up a large percentage of that. The average age of a gamer is now 35 years of age, meaning that half of the gamers in the states are above 35, which is pretty crazy information to process, to be honest. The gaming industry is currently evaluated to be worth $350 billion, expected to breach the half a trillion mark in the next few years. Newzoo has laid out this fantastic little chart segmenting all of the gamers into nine distinct categories. Now, using these categories, it would indicate that of the 212 million US players, 91 million of them exclusively play mobile games or don't play major consoles. Only about 57% of gamers actually like to personally play games on consoles or PCs. Now here's where the age comes back in. Out of all of the gamers in the US, legit only 23% of gamers are below 18. Now why is this important? Well, the only people outside of pros with enough time to get seriously good and stay good at 90% of competitive games are below 18. The other 77% of gamers probably have jobs and families. So let's take our total 57% of gamers who enjoy playing console games and then take 23% of that and we're left with a grand total of 11% of gamers. These are the people who like the games but also have the time to get good at them. Once you hit a certain age, playing games to be a competitive player just might not be worth it. Furthermore, you might start finding that games are only fun for those at the top specifically. A recent study made by a researcher at the University of Oxford ran an experiment to determine what the connection was between frustration and gaming if there was any to begin with. They first took in a collection of college students and had them initially dip their hands in a bowl of ice water for a set amount of time. Now what they told the college students was that the previous contestant had set the amount of time they had to hold their hand in. After this, they played a game with very levels of violence, and then finally a game of Tetris. Half of the students got a very easy version of Tetris, and the other half got a far more difficult version. Then, at the end of this, the students were asked to set the time for the next student to hold their hands in the ice for, and the results are fucking fascinating. There was absolutely no difference in students who had been exposed to different levels of violence, but the students who had played the far more frustrating version of Tetris on average made the next student hold their hand in water for an additional 10 seconds. The reason I'm bringing this up is that if video games are taken far too seriously as more than just a way of having fun, then let's be real here, you're gonna get frustrated, increasingly aggressive, and potentially sadistic. So potentially start reconsidering your approach to the medium as a whole. But admittedly, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is exactly what I've fallen into many, many times. I am an incredibly competitive person in literally anything I get into, and as a result, games that I used to have a bunch of fun with have become very frustrating, serious endeavors. So I'm a bit conflicted here, so I once again decided to ask my friends how competitiveness has affected gaming. Do you think the shift towards competitive multiplayer games also has had an impact on what we consider to be like nostalgic games or kind of the soul of games as a whole? Yeah, uh, I think sometimes uh, some of the most unbalanced games were like the most fun, whereas like you're not you don't see that as often anymore. Um, like Modern Warfare 2 was so horribly balanced. <laughs> like yeah. it was so bad, Yeah, but it was so much fun too. 
I don't know how one man army made it into the game. That was insane. <laughs> yeah, and, and even, you know, I'll be honest, like they definitely crossed the line <laughs> in a few places where uh, it would have still been more fun to just have that gone. For sure. Um, but like maybe it was like just that they erred on the side of uh, things being fun in their mind. Like they're like, this would just be fun that people can do this, even though it's broken. Whereas now they're like, hey, like if it's not balanced and we can't make an esport out of it, how are we gonna, you know, compete with? The, they're, <clears throat> they're trying to like monetize that. There's a lot of money in esports, right? Esports has blown up, just like the entire gaming industry has blown up. Reason two: the world around you has changed. As a kid, I'm sure 90% of you out there didn't exactly have a lot to worry about. Even in your teenage years, you had maybe high school, sports, and maybe a job if you're a hard worker to take up your time, but you'd usually have enough time to hop on with your friends and relax. But as an adult now, you have a bunch of shit to worry about. Paying rent, all of your other bills, friendships, keeping up with your family, your significant other. There's a bunch of stuff to take up your time. And honestly, it can be a bit overwhelming. A lot of the people I grew up with now are getting married, getting a mortgage, and even having kids. My point is that everything that you didn't have to worry about as a kid is finally becoming something that you do have to worry about, and it's somewhat easy to feel weighed down by it. Personally speaking, trying to relax has now become more of a task than it is to actually work on something, and the escape from reality that gaming is just can't distract me enough to stop me from just wanting to get back to what I need to do. The world around you has changed, you've gotten older, and taking a break doesn't always seem like the best move anymore. This subject is unfortunately one that I couldn't even try to prove if I wanted to. It remains a personal diagnosis from person to person, and I personally feel that the increased stress of being an adult has without a doubt impacted my ability to enjoy a game. Reason 3. The games themselves have changed. A common argument in the gaming community is if the quality of video games themselves have changed as a whole, and there's definitely an argument to be made for both sides. When it comes to a technical aspect, there is no argument that can be made against gaming being better than ever. I mean, just look at the most recent games coming out, the level of detail is on an entirely different level. So I think this argument is more so held on a level of gameplay, and that's where things get a little bit dicey, and to be honest, it comes down to personal preferences, and I don't really think the gameplay has changed too much in the last 10 years. The only huge change to the industry in the past maybe 5 or 10 years was Fortnite, and generally the switch to free-to-play models of video games, which I really don't think are going to last too much longer. Outside of that, Call of Duty has somehow gotten worse, but they still get the same numbers they used to, Minecraft is still live, and story-based games still make a huge impact, so to be honest, since roughly 2010, I don't think games have changed all that much from a gameplay perspective. However, looking from a broader scope, there's definitely a more substantial deviation in game design from the PS3 and onwards. Previously to the popularization of Unreal Engine and Unity, many games had incredibly unique art styles and direction. This was a result of games having to make custom engines as a result of of not having a universal option, and so from a visual perspective, so many of the PS2 era games had just such incredibly distinct graphics, physics, and animation, whereas now we live in an era where asset flips can exist, and nearly 30% of games are made with Unity, and 50% of mobile games are made with Unity. Another point I want to touch on is that honestly, gaming seems to be a touch less original than it once was. This largely boils down to an overarching issue with the gaming industry, which is the corporatization of gaming in general. Now, that's a pretty vague thing to throw out there, but let me elaborate a little bit. In the past, there were a few games that devs could throw out every single year but the concept of annually released series like say Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed have become a more so recent thing, and both of which have been drastically hurt by this. Right now, more than ever, games are being rushed, and more importantly, giving deadlines that are more important than the quality of the games themselves. Of course, all of these issues had occurred before the modern era of gaming, but there's no denying that AAA games now more than ever have corporate involvement. Once again, I decided to ask Chase for some input. Do you think it's fair to say that the corporatization of video games, which really started in like the PS3 era, may have had a substantial impact on gaming. Definitely, in terms of like when I what I talked about earlier about like games losing their soul, um, it's just straight up a business, and like a business is supposed to make money. They see like what worked, and then they try to copy it, and it's like whatever it is that makes the most money. But they're not like thinking, man, I love this game. This I this is like right. a game that we're all passionate about. What is something like the best version of itself that it could be? Uh, like because you love the art. Like, you have, like, right. a vision for the game. It's more like, hey, what should we do here? Well, Fortnite did this, and look how much money they made. Oh, yeah, let's do that. That's A, a lot of companies will rush. The games will get rushed. It's like the developers don't want to have to rush it. That, that's, I guess, that's another thing, bro. Like, when I was a kid, games didn't have updates. <laughs> and that's a huge difference in terms of, like, the quality of games that we're getting. At least with, like, I feel like when a game comes out now, it's like, wait a year. So, to your original question, yeah, uh, the corporatization of gaming, definitely. That's, like, a 
a big downside. A very interesting point Chase brings up here is the addition of updates to the video game world, which previously to this, video game studios had to fully prepare a game to be as bug-free as possible since there weren't any do-overs whatsoever. And while I certainly won't argue with you that the ability to add content to a game several years after it's released is amazing and the ability to add, say, like an emergency balance patch has just only made games better, it's also opened the door to laziness. Of course, shitty game releases have always happened, but more so now than ever. If it was impossible to update Cyberpunk 2077 after it released, do we really think that would have been released in the state that it was? Probably not. The mere fact that I can buy a game that has put out gameplay trailers and just get a game that doesn't even slightly resemble it and is a buggy, poorly made mess is just baffling when you're talking about studios like CDPR, or even Bethesda, or literally every goddamn Battlefield game in existence. It's honestly gotten to a point where most people are reasonably refusing to pre-order games and for pretty good reason. So from some people's perspectives, not only are the games less visually distinct, but you're also running the risk of buying a $60 unplayable nightmare. But it's time to finally ask an important question. Why is it so bad if games change? That's the natural evolution of things, of course. It's going to evolve and it will continue to do so. Of course, there are a few downsides we just went over, but there are also a ton of positives too. The era of DLC has allowed games to stay relevant for a far longer period of time, and some DLC content ranks amongst the best stuff ever made. Games shouldn't always feel the same. To someone who grew up with an Atari, PS2 games might not have been the same to them. There are a ton of people who just stopped playing games once there were more than two buttons on a controller. If anything, the gaming industry needs innovation now more than ever, and I think this question more so implies that you feel gaming is now specifically different from when you were a kid. Overall, I think it's fair to say that gaming has changed and in many ways improved, but in others declined. But the concept of age seems to be the common thread through all of this. Every single gamer I talk to usually talks about gaming as a past tense, especially in reference to their teenage or childhood years. The same way that someone might talk about movies being better when they were a kid, and the same thing with music. My point is that everything changes, and to argue what's better is a useless, arbitrary thing to do. But this directly leads into my biggest point. Reason 4. You've changed. You, as a person, don't miss the way games were when you were a kid. The quality of the games may have changed slightly or even drastically in your opinion, but I'm betting a substantial amount of money that you miss how you felt playing those games as a kid. With nothing to worry about, no money issues, no relationship problems, just simpler, easier times. And of course, gaming can't just bring that back. You've changed more than gaming did. A lot of people acknowledge the existence of nostalgia, but very few people understand exactly why we experience it. Nostalgia is quite literally a mental defense mechanism against loneliness, and it works fucking wonders. Nostalgia is most commonly experienced in winter months, and it's been proven to increase the human body temperature by a substantial amount. It mostly comes up in times where people were depressed and can often lessen these effects. Nostalgia often brings your brain comfort since it exclusively decides to pull the good memories, but can also be interpreted as the most bittersweet of human emotions. The downside of choosing to view the past in a positive light is that the present will naturally feel lesser. You are nostalgic, let's not get it twisted, just accept it. But I don't want to leave you all empty handed here, so I think taking all of these reasons, I can form a bigger picture and maybe put together a way to enjoy games a little bit more. But first, let's answer the question. Why doesn't gaming feel the same anymore? The world around you has changed, and it's become miles harder to enjoy things the same way that you could. And as a result, you may have started to play games for the wrong reasons, exclusively playing them with competitive goals or for an endgame, without the resources to successfully do so. On top of that, the medium itself has shifted from what you feel nostalgic for, and most importantly, you have changed as a person. That, people, is why gaming doesn't feel the same, because gaming isn't the same, and you aren't the same. Now let's talk about some ways to start enjoying games a little bit more. My first suggestion is reevaluate what you're planning to do with your time. If you only have time to play games on the weekends or after a long day of work, maybe consider taking competitive games less seriously or moving to a more casually oriented game. Secondly, games that require you to sink a bunch of time regularly like maybe Rust might not be such a good idea as much as you might like those games. Thirdly, maybe consider picking up some games that don't require you to be so well practiced to do well. A lot of strategy games or even chess have a lot of residual skill that stays with you for a good portion of your life regardless of whether or not you had to take a break. The next things are hard to do, but I suggest you do your best to improve your surroundings before you decide to play a game. Gaming is an escape from reality for some people, but if there's something you need to do, gaming's only going to make you feel guilty. Take care of everything you need to do, then put yourself in the right mindset to play. Then I'd pick a game that sounds fun. If you don't enjoy new games these days, don't be afraid to be a nostalgia fiend and just play through all of your childhood shit. Recently, the old school COD games got their servers back and playing some of these games is always good fun. Or go even further back and play some of the single player shit you grew up with. And finally, there's no point in changing yourself for a hobby, but just accept that you're not the same person and maybe it's time to shift your gaming taste or maybe find a different hobby. Or, more importantly, maybe just take a break from gaming and come back later. I hope this video to some extent has been enlightening or at the very least maybe a bit thought-provoking. As I said earlier, if it's not too much to ask, just comment your age and when you think gaming started to change, if you feel that way. Like I said, after a week I'll try to compile most of the common reasons and ages and pin a comment that's sort of a compendium of all of it. But with everything said, I appreciate you all for watching this far and as per usual, any and all support would help me out, but no one can force you to do so and I will see you all in the next one.